Hi friends, uh, welcome back to VLSI Fab. Uh, in my last airdrop video, I promised you to uh, give some videos in EM and its consequences. So I came up with this video. Uh, please watch till the end as I have tried to gather all the stuff required for EM in this single video. So this is the way my content will proceed. So at the end of the slide, I tried to cover some important interview questions also. So please keep on watch till last. So what is electromigration? So electromigration is the gradual displacement of metal atoms in semiconductor. So it occurs when the current density is high enough to cause the drift of metal ions in the direction of the electron flow. So this d density actually depends on the magnitude of forces that tends to hold the ions in a place. So for that the nature of the conductor, crystal size, the interface and uh, so this, these are the things that uh, matters actually. So the magnitude also the mag magnitude of the forces that tends to dislodge them. So including the current density, temperature, mechanical stress. So all the things will come into the picture when we are talking about the EM. So while EM has been a problem like since 90 NM or even earlier. So it gets worse at advanced nodes such as 20 NM or below. So because it will be uh, like interconnect will become more small, small less. So that's because wires are thinner actually so and current densities obviously will become higher as the wires will get getting thinner current densities are getting higher so as you scale the wires down to more advanced process nodes so resistance increases and more current is needed so similarly to get the performance you need from devices you may need to increase the current density so it will again create the EM issue so again uh, from the slide you can see like uh, what why EM actually matters uh, in the circuit. So what you can uh, go wrong when metal atom drifts away from their intended positions right. So that is the thing I, I had tried to uh, like shown you in the slide. Like one problem is open circuits due to the voids in wires or wires. So another problem is short circuit due to hillocks on wires like it will become some part of the wire may extend so either can use a system failure that is hard to diagnose actually because if the system got failure because of these issues it is very hard to diagnose so we need to take care of EM uh, very carefully so these are the caused by uh, difference in incoming and outgoing ion flux. So before uh, going to the details of uh, EM, I would like to mention few points uh, which you can see in the slides. So these are few points and uh, moreover like a uh, few more points are there like uh, EM is worse at higher temperatures and uh, e like EM mitigation techniques such as widening the wires cannot only increase area, they can cause timing violations also. So EM fixing needs to be timing driven. So these are some measures that you need to take that we'll discuss in the later part of the video. So in this slide we will discuss what are the types of EM. So EM has basically two types. So what these are the uh, cell EM and the wire EM. And again wire EM has two types. One is signal EM and the power EM. So first of all we'll discuss what is cell EM. Then we'll go to uh, signal EM. So what is cell EM? So cell EM basically it rules the addresses the EM caused by current within a cell. So this this is all about the all about related to a cell. And cell EM rules operate on the principle that although the currents within a cell cannot be calculated due to a lack of physical layout information, they can be controlled based on the external physical entities. So the tool estimates the, def the detrimental effects of currents within a cell. So it is a function of its output load, maybe input slew or switching frequency. So it will be calculated on the based of based on these parameters. So now uh, what is signal EM? So it is as you can see, this name itself is a signal EM. So 
signaling is nothing but excessive current density within a interconnect so which if not effectively mitigated due to causes electrom electromigration so first of all we have to know we, need, we should know like what is the uh, current density through a interconnect to check the signal m and electromigration like this e signal m is the gradual displacement of metal atoms in a semiconductor so it occurs when the current density through the conductor is very high and it causes the drift of metal ions so we'll discuss the causes of signal m one by one so first is like high fan out net so when multiple fan out switches together a high current is drawn from a from the driver this high current generates considerable heat that may displace the metal atom resulting in either voids or hillocks then driver size a size a cell size of suppose 16x or 12x is unnecessarily induces a large current in the interconnects which heats up the wire this large drivers causes a high IRM, IRMS value and a high delta T value so moreover fin fat is due to the 3d structure has high channel volume that conducts more current for the same driver size compared to the planar transistor then the fast transition so fast transition of data is the requirement in high speed chips but it has some of its own reliability problems faster transition means high velocity electrons which when collides with the atoms of interconnect causes them to break from the lattice structure and causing voids and hillocks so so you can understand like it's all about basically uh, like uh, like all these things finally going to be uh, ended up with voids and hillocks so it may cause some shorts or opens like clock nets have the highest probability of suffering from the this issue as it has the highest high frequ frequency signal passing through it so with very high fan out and moreover they are global nets then these are spanned across all across the chip and uh, like long nets so sometimes em may arise with the single fan out also the reason being the long resistive interconnect as the length of the interconnect increases its resistance will increase so this high resistance causes a high localized temperature along the net which is further increases the resistance resulting metal reliability problems and increase in delta temperature value so in this slide we will discuss uh, signal em fixes <coughs> so uh, like uh, there are two types of fixes one is manual fix one is automatic fix so we'll discuss first the manual fixes then we'll discuss the automatic fixes so in manual fixes first we'll check like driver downsizing so downsizing the driver cell will reduce the current density in the interconnects and reduce the risk of em failure so though we have to make sure that downsizing the driver is not affecting the timing or transition time in that path so we can check the timing of the em affected path before and after downsizing the uh, downsizing the driver using sta tool like pt or tempus then ndr on the victim nets so applying ndr will increase the metal width which will in turn increase its current carrying capability so safest way, way is to apply ndr on the whole net but if the design is too congested then applying ndr on the whole net may result in high number of short or detouring the detouring of that net which will affect the timing so alternately you can apply ndr on only those segments or the layers of the nets which have high IR, means high irms high rms current okay then insert buffer so inserting a buffer or a pair of inverters will break the long nets and reduce the resistance so we have to make sure that the em affected parts has enough timing margin so that adding a buffer won't degrade the timing then again uh, routing on higher layers so higher layer routing are means higher higher routing layers are less resistive so and have higher current carrying capabilities also so this makes nets less prone to electromigration though we have to make sure that before routing on higher layers the routing congestion of those layers should be less or else it will result in short and uh, detouring so again the last point is 
use multicut wire or NDR wire. So electro migration is more dominant on wires actually. If you have a short piece of uh, metal, then EM will be more. So as there is sudden change in area through which current is flowing, so uses of multicut wire will increase the wire area, reduces the resistance, and also increases the reliability of the wire. So NDR NDR wire are larger in size and larger that have larger contact area. And in automatic fixes, there are like NDR aware PNR. There is during global routing at placement, placement engine will occupy more tracks for the nets. So wherever possible, so that the net can be applied with NDR at routing stage. This method is very effective if design is less congested. Enabling hole fixing uh, during PNR or fixing hole timing prior to EM fixing at sign of considerably reduces the EM. So welding net as a hole fixing will add buffers that will ultimately break the nets. So moreover in most of the PNR tools adding buffer will be timing aware in, in a sense that it will make sure that the setup time will not get deteriorated. Then making high driving cell as don't use. So if EM violation is in is high in number, so we can run an experiment with setting up high driving cell suppose x uh, 12x or uh, 16x as don't care, uh, don't use. Setting them as don't use will avoid the uses of those cell throughout the PNR flow, and doing so it may affect the transition time and performance. So uh, power EM. <coughs> uh, so if any uh, EM issue comes in power power net, suppose VDD or VSS. So as a block owner, uh, you can't touch those uh, nets, right? As the same VDD and VSS is going to other blocks also. So it will be taken care by the power planning team, and they will do the fixes for that. Suppose increasing or decreasing the width of the power straps. So uh, in this slide, uh, we will discuss like uh, what is the transition in uh, different nodes, like technology nodes. So as we know, like uh, after, as we we'll go lower than the 65 nm technology, there will be lots of changes in every technology nodes, and every technology nodes have their own challenges. So like in 65 nm, uh, st some new challenges have occurred, like static drop, static air drop, and dynamic air drop. Then after 14 and 40 and again some low power issues came as the technology node as scaling scaling will be more so low power will come into the picture so UPF kind of things will come into the picture so next reliability the reliability is it's all about scaling again so power EM and signal EM came to the picture again it when you uh, go to uh, like a 20 nm and lower than that then again new reliability issue will come that is called ESD issue so that is uh, ESD you can check in uh, um, you can check up the theory in details but uh, what I will say like now as of now I am saying what is the transition in the different technology nodes so in 16 nm again OCV come into the picture double patterning come into the picture it's in terms of DRCs so double patterning multi pattern multi patterning so these things come into the picture then 10 nm again 10 nm 10 nm again uh, when it goes to 10 nm again power integrity issues came then OCV handling issues some OCV handling issues were there in terms of timing then when you go to 7 nm again uh, in 7 nm also like uh, there those uh, dif those changes i have already uh, given the slide but the uh, one more changes i have not given that is like in 16 nm and 7 nm the one major difference is that in 16 nm off track routing is allowed but 7 nm off track routing is not allowed like you whenever you are going to route anything any layer manually then you need to do on track only you can't do off track so these are the transition in different nodes maybe I have missed some points but uh, kindly adjust with these points as of now so next question is like uh, in which stage we, we should check the EM 
so as i already told there are two type of ems power em and signal em so signal em we check in the interconnect interconnect so to get the interconnect uh, we should have the routing we should completed the routing stage so once the routing will completed and we go to a sign off stage then uh, what we do we started fixing the timing so once the timing is fixed like uh, we have uh, not fixed exactly but the few iteration of timing has been done and then we have started for the em and ir uh, also so that em fixing and timing fixing uh, will go in parallel so that uh, so that we can't see any big surprise at the end of the sign off stage so uh, this timing and er we do the um, like timing and er em oblique ir fixing we do in parallel and once this things gonna fix then uh, we do the drc cleaning and finally we tap out the chip so the tool that we use for uh, em analysis in the sign off stage is like uh, from ANSYS, it's Red Hawk. This is a major tool uh, in for sign off for EM and IR drop analysis. And from Cadence, we use Voltus. So these are the few advanced rules which uh, which are used in uh, lower technology nodes such as 10 nm or 7 nm. So uh, just read the advanced rules. If you didn't understood it, just. Uh, Write down your doubts in the comment section. I will get back to you as I am running short of the time. So I'm, I will be moving to the next slide. So this slide is a debugging report. So before I will tell you how to debug the reports. First of all you should know like uh, what is peak current, RMS current, all these things. So like uh, usually there are three important currents that we uh, have to calculate for EM. Like peak current. RMS current and the DC current so almost all the relations between current and metal width is given by the foundry and you can find them in your design rule man manual I can say DRM so RMS current normally decides the metal width that you require in your design RMS current are usually applied to signals that are charging and discha discharging so DC current for signals which which have steady state values so peak current to the two complement the others two so rms current can be calculated by putting a resistance at the output of the signal driver so with the rms current value apply it in the equation provided by the foundry and calculate the required metal width as well as number of wires that you need for your signal and uh, you know em is directly responsible for reliability of your design uh, usually a chip has a reliability of 20 years but due to improper EM or not doing EM analysis can lead to shortening of the chip life. So, like uh, I have, as I have given in the slide, like uh, how is the how reports will come. So, like first is layer from from X to X Y, then violation, then net name, then current and the limit. So, see in the example. So, um, suppose violation is coming on M4 layer with uh, coordinates 456.22 to 456.76 so it will if you go to that coordinate you will find a layer of m4 okay so which uh, and the net name is this one cts buff underscore net underscore suppose kamal that is my name then here it is again showing current so the current that you are getting on that m4 layer is 1.39 into 10 to the power minus 4 and the limit is given as 5.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 so if it's under the limit that means uh, em is fine and if the current value is more than the li uh, limit given in the uh, given by the foundry then there will be em violation so we need to fix those uh, fixed uh, by using the techniques that i have already mentioned and we need to proceed and uh, last of all i would like to say thanks to all the viewers uh, and uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel vlsi app and uh, don't hesitate to write down your suggestions in the comment box and uh, please keep on uh, supporting like this okay thank you